Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we are here for a long overdue eyeshadow palette declutter. A few weeks or months ago, I forgot how long ago it was, I did put out a collection video where I showed all of my palettes. I haven't done like an actual declutter in like about a year, I think, like an actual declutter. Eyeshadow palettes are not only my biggest section portion of my uh, makeup collection but they're the closest to my heart. I love eyeshadow palettes, I love eyeshadow, I love eye makeup so this I don't think this is gonna be as like I don't know harsh uh, as the rest of my declutters because in my other declutters I did like half of my highlighters and half of this. I don't think I'm gonna get rid of nearly as many eyeshadow palettes here but I know that there are quite a few that can go. <laughs> So we're gonna go through all of my palettes. I'm gonna try and not make this like an hour long again. 90% uh, of my eyeshadow palettes are in these two drawers down here. But I also have quite a few that I keep up on my vanity as like my everyday go-to palettes and I switch those out kind of regularly. And then I also have some palettes on display around my room. So I'll bring those in and try to do most of the declutter here in the main storage area. So let's go ahead and start with the palettes I have up on my vanity. The first of course being my Pan That palette, my ABH Subculture palette. This is going to be a bit of a sneak peek since this is coming out before my next update, but I have hit pan in another shade, actually one that I was struggling with, so I'm pretty happy about this. I have pan and mercury, uh, pan and roxy, new wave edge, rowdy. I'm actually doing pretty good, um, and I really think it helps just to keep this within arm's reach on my vanity. So this is, hasn't really left my vanity since I started pan that palette for this year, so definitely keeping this one. I also keep my two newest ABH palettes up there as well, just trying to use them and bring them in with my subculture palette. I have the Alyssa Edwards palette, which is still fairly new. It is gorgeous. I love the shades in here. I haven't done a video on this yet. I'm debating whether or not to do like a three looks, one palette, or just like a first impression review, one look thing, but I actually really like it so far. So definitely holding on to this one. And I also have the Riviera palette, which I did do a whole video on this. I did do three looks, and I do like the shades in here, especially the shimmers. I think the shimmers match pretty well with the mattes in Subculture. So I'm trying to keep this up to use this with my Subculture palette. Another palette that I brought out to use with my Subculture palette is actually the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette, because this was actually on the chopping block for me. I was debating heavily whether or not to declutter this, because I never really reached for it. But when I started reaching for it to bring in and use with the mattes and subculture, I fell back in love with this palette. I love the shades Gold Dipped, Rich Girl, and Drippin' Diamonds with some of the darker shades in subculture. The gold, the chocolate gold shade is also gorgeous. I love the greens, Holla for a Dollar, and Money Bags. This is just a great palette, and it just takes me a little bit of extra effort to actually reach for it but I do love it, so I'm gonna hold on to this. Next up on the palettes I still keep on my vanity, I have the Hasina 2 palette from Blush Tribe. This is the only Blush Tribe palette I currently own, and I'm bringing this back out to keep testing because I feel like I haven't actually used every shade in here, especially the shimmers. And after the reaction I got from a Certify palette, I was very allergic to the ingredients or something within that Certify palette. And since they're sister brands, I had some people comment saying, well, how do you react to the Blush Tribe one? Because, you know, they're sister brands. Uh, so I brought this back out and I haven't seen any reaction using the matte shades. I've used Re, Erin, Mejia, Manil, and Ash pretty regularly and I haven't seen anything happen. But I think what I got a reaction to the most in the other palette were the shimmers. So I really need to use these shimmers and see if I get the same reaction, because that would be very sad. If I get the same reaction, I'm going to have to declutter this, and I'll probably send it to a friend as well. But I'm really hoping I don't, because I love these green shades. I also did place a pre-order for the, uh, the new Blush Tribe, and it's like all green. <laughs> so I'm really hoping I don't get a reaction, because I really want that green palette too. And last but not least for my vanity palettes, I have the new Alter Ego Goddess palette. And this is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Gold palette. 
and I've been testing this out. I did do a whole video on Alter Ego's first um, first palette release, which was a dupe for an ABH palette. So I, I can link that up above if you guys want to see. I'm still thoroughly testing this one out, so I'll do a video at some point, but I also I don't have the original palette to compare to because I wasn't going to spend that much money on Natasha Denona again because I have several palettes and I don't reach for them as often as I should due to the price point, you know? So uh, I don't have the gold palette to compare to, but so far I'm enjoying it, but I do need to do a lot more testing with this. So that's also why it's on my vanity. All right, let's get into the drawer now. This is my big Natasha Denona palette. This is the green brown palette. Oh, I can't even get the whole thing in frame. There we go. I have to hold on to this purely because of the price point. Whenever I bring this out and use it, I love the eye looks that I get, but I don't pull it out as often as I should. I was actually really debating whether to pan a Natasha Denona palette for next year's Pan That Palette. This is too big for a Pan That Palette. There's no way I could get through it, but maybe one of the smaller ones. So I'm going to keep holding on to this one. So I think this is the first one I'm actually going to declutter. This is from BH Cosmetics and this is the Take Me Back to Brazil palette. And I always say in every video I bring this up in like, oh, I need to reach for this more often. I need to just remember to pull this out. And I haven't touched it since the last time I said that. And it's still fairly brand new. So this needs to move out of my collection and go to someone who's actually going to use it. And I have to remember this whenever I want another rainbow palette because you had a rainbow palette and I never used it. <laughs> So this is going to get decluttered. Next, I have the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. This original palette is amazing. I love the shades in here. I love everything about this except for like that middle highlight shade. It doesn't really work that well as a highlighter. So yeah, I mean, everything else about this is great. I love the shades. I love the shimmers. I just don't like the highlighter in the middle. So definitely keeping the Zodiac palette. I also have the Zodiac Love Signs palette, which I do like, but not as much as the original Zodiac palette. I like that we've got a little bit of like a warmer tone here. You've got some oranges, you've got some pinks. I still like this. And I actually, I like the highlighter in this one a lot better than the original palette. So I'm gonna hold on to this one too. This one might actually be decluttered. Uh, this is the Carly Bible Deluxe palette from BH Cosmetics. And I do like the highlighters in here. I do like those and I think this is a great like all-in-one palette if you're a beginner or if you don't want to spend too much time rummaging through to find product. But I never really reach for it. And th th that does not mean that this isn't a good palette. Like I think this is a good palette. I mentioned it in a video I did where I talked about like really affordable neutral palettes that are good. So I think it's a good palette but I'm not reaching for it. So I'm gonna declutter this one too. In these next few palettes, I have a bunch of single shades, and I have to say, I never touch my single shades. Like, I had all these blue single shades, and I still bought a blue palette. Like, I really need to do some thought about my single palettes, because I, I literally never use them. I might need to bring them into a project or do something with them, because I don't touch them. But that might be for a different video, so for now, I'm just going to put them to the side. This is also another palette of just singles that I never really touch. Let me know down below what you guys do to use your singles because I spent a lot of money on these. I think they're pretty shades. I just never reach for them ever. So let me know how you use your singles, how you reach for your singles, what you do because these are not getting any use. So this palette gave me a lot of pause and I really thought about this for a while. This is the Makeup Revolution Emily Edit Once palette. And when I first tried this out, I thought it was decent. I liked it. I like the shades that I used. I think they're decent shadows. I do think they require a little bit more work than your average palette. And I do like the shades. I think this is definitely a different color scheme for a more neutral leaning palette, but it's not like an amazing palette. So since I decluttered her Needs palette, the face palette, I'm gonna hold on to this one and give it just a little bit more testing and trying because I still think the idea of it was great. I just think it wasn't really what people were expecting like formula wise because you do have to build these up, you do have to pack them on, you do need to spend a lot more time working with them. But I think that's pretty par for the course when it comes to Makeup Revolution shadows. 
Next, I have two Profusion palettes that I still haven't used, which is sad, but I'm just, I was looking at these and I realized that they're really similar. So I think I'm gonna just declutter one of them and give them to someone who's gonna use it. And I think it's gonna be Temptress. So these basically have the same color story with the exception that this Temptress one has less green. And I like green, and you see it still has the packaging on it. So I'm gonna declutter Temptress, and I'm gonna keep Wanderlust, which is this one, because you can see this one has more green shades, it's a little bit more colorful, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. Next, we have my Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And this one, you know what, if anything, this kind of just really pisses me off, because I actually really like this palette. I think the formula is awesome. I think the shades are great. It is a bit of a bigger palette, so I don't reach for it that often. It kind of gets stuck at the bottom of my drawer, like you saw here. But I can't recommend this. I can't support Jaclyn Hill after everything that's happened. Uh, so, I don't know. I've, I have some friends that are thinking of panning this since they're no longer really going to be buying anything Jaclyn related anymore. I've thought about that, but I didn't know if I could stick to this as a full pan that palette. So yeah we'll see maybe i'll do one of those things where i depot this and create a new palette but i don't know all i'm saying is that i actually really like this palette i don't want to see it go but i don't support jacqueline hill yeah these are another two palettes that i still haven't opened because i'm saving them for a spotlight on petite palettes which i haven't done in a long time and I just haven't done it yet. These are the Wet n Wild Color Icon Quads from their limited edition uh, Rebel Rose collection. This one's called House of Thorns and this one's called Bed of Roses. So I'm gonna hold on to them because I actually still, they're brand new. I haven't even cracked open the seal on these yet. So I need to actually use these before I declutter them. I have two palettes from the Balms Matte series, the Meet Matador and the Meet Matrimony. I had a third one that I ended up decluttering because I didn't like it as much. This is the Meet Matador, and I do like these shades, but I don't reach for them as often. They're more cool-toned neutrals. I really do like the Meet Matrimony. I think if I were to keep one, it would be the Meet Matrimony because I love... These are like just your perfect like neutral shades. Everything. You've got a matte black. You've got these different shades of like beige. You've got a pink. You've got a, a burgundy. You've got like this kind of... This looks like a lot like... um mercury is that what it's called from the subculture palette that deep kind of shade i really like this one i'm really debating whether or not to keep matador because i don't reach for it ever yeah i think i'm gonna i'm gonna declutter matador and just keep matrimony because really this is the only one that i actually reach for and like I have this Urban Decay Elements palette, which was their holiday palette from 2018, and this is uh, stunning. I love the shimmers in here. Again, I wasn't reaching for it as often. I kind of had the same issue that I did with the Chocolate Gold palette from Too Faced. So I'm trying to bring this out more often, but I still love this, so I'm, I'm keeping it. Next, I have this kind of face palette slash eye palette from Pixie, and this is called the Hello LA Angel palette. So when you open it, you've got like kind of a warm toned neutral palette here. And then you've got like a blushy highlight, a bronzer or two bronzers, really. These are kind of both warm toned. I picked this up because I am trying out or trying to get more products from Pixie into my collection and really test it out. But I haven't actually used this yet. So I'm going to hold on to this and give it a fair shot once I have some more Pixie products. But at least here in the States, I always... Ugh, I get turned off by Pixie because of the price point. Like, I don't want to go into Target and see products for the same price that I could get, like, at Sephora. Like, it kind of blew my mind that I was in Target looking at an $18 eyeliner from Pixie when that's the price of an eyeliner in Sephora. So that kind of gets me a bit mm, about the brand, but I am still trying to try some stuff out because there are some products that people say are, like, their holy grails from Pixie. So I'm trying to find some more products. I have two other Natasha Denona palettes in here. The first one is the Leela palette, which is this beautiful purple palette. I really don't reach for purple all too often. Not 100% sure why I bought this. I think it was because I saw a bunch of pretty tutorials with this and I was like, I want it. But I don't reach for it too often. Oh, am I going to declutter this? Ugh. This is going to be on the chopping block. This is officially on the chopping block. I'm going to put it up on my vanity. If I do not use this by the end of the next month, it's going to have to go because it's just sitting here. It's just sitting here. 
This palette I actually do use a decent amount. This is the Sunset palette, the original palette that began the Sunset craze, and it was my first Natasha Denona palette. I actually really do like this. I like the shades in here, I like the shimmers, I like the way it's organized. This is actually a really good palette, and it's pretty dirty because I do get in here in this packaging, it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean. I'll have to clean this, but I actually use this one, so it's staying. Next, I have the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette, and this one was actually like one of the first ever higher end palettes I bought. Um, and I, I really do like some of the shades in here. This is really old though. Like I think I bought this a long time, a few years. This is like one of the first palettes I bought. So I don't know if it's still safe to use. I actually haven't used it in a while. So I don't know if the formula has changed or turned. Uh, but I'm gonna, I got sentimental value of this palette, man. I, I'm gonna hold on to it. And also it's a lot of cool tone shades. I don't really have too many cool tone things in my collection. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Now this palette, I think this one has to go. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat palette. And when I first got this, I like fell in love and I loved all the shades in here and I thought it was so different. But what everyone says is true. You really only get one look out of this palette. Everything kind of blends together. And I've tried, like, I think I tried doing like a three looks, one palette with this and I couldn't really, cause they all pretty much looked the same. And I, I have these shades in other palettes and it's kind of silly to keep a palette around for one look when it's like this big. So I'm gonna declutter the good old Naked Heat. Moving over into some Too Faced palettes, I have the Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar. This is the only chocolate bar that I have. It's a bit messy because I do dig into this every now and then. Not as much as my other palettes though. So I'm, I'm debating this one. I don't know if I wanna keep this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna declutter this. Yeah, so this one's gonna go because I've got two other Too Faced palettes that I use a lot more than this one and they both have some neutral tones too. So I don't need this one. Next, I have the Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette and this one is gorgeous. I love the shimmers in here. I love the packaging. I, I love everything about this palette and I would definitely reach for this one more than the other chocolate bar palettes. So definitely holding on to this one. The only downside is I got this at TJ Maxx and I think the packaging got messed up. Can you focus please? Because you can see it doesn't actually close all the way right there, which is a little sad, but it doesn't really affect the shadows too much. So I just got to be careful with the packaging. Last but not least for this drawer, I have the Sweet Peach palette, which I adore. I love this palette. I actually hit pan on my favorite shade, which is Luscious right over there. I love how versatile this palette is. I love the shade selection. I, I'd love, this is like one of my perfect palettes. So definitely keeping this one. Before I rearrange everything back into this drawer, I brought over a couple of palettes that I keep like on display around my room. I thought I would just show you guys those real quick because I don't think I'm really gonna declutter any of them. The first one is this MAC palette. This has a whole bunch of MAC singles. I basically went in and created my own palette with my boyfriend. We had a really fun time. He was helping me pick out shades. I wanted to do an all green palette, but they were at, like out of stock of a lot of their green singles, which is a bit sad, but I still got a pretty nice palette out of it. So this was the palette. It's got sentimental value. It's got a lot of green shadows and I love it. So this is definitely staying around and I keep it um, on top of my dresser, like on display. Next, I have my Jeffree Star palette. So the first one is the Thirsty palette, which is the summer palette from last year. Haven't really used it a whole bunch. Um, I did do a whole video on this though, so I can link that up above or down below if you guys would like. I need to bring this back out and start using it. Like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I'm no longer buying from Jeffree Star, but I'm just using up the products that I currently have, which includes the next two palettes. Next palette I have is Blood Sugar. I actually love this stupid palette. Death, ugh. I actually really love the packaging. I love all the shades. It's just bulky. So instead of keeping it at the bottom of my drawer, I also keep this up on display in my room. Same deal. I can't really recommend the palette because I'm not buying from Jeffree Star anymore, but I am going to be using this up. This would be a nice pan, that palette. Ooh. And last but not least, I have Blue Blood. Which I also haven't gotten around to really using fully, but I actually really like the shade Crystal Flesh right there. It's just a gorgeous shimmer shade. Again, not buying from the brand, but just using up what I have. Okay, 
then there we go for this drawer. It does. It might not look like a lot, but I actually decluttered more than I thought I would already. So far, we've gotten rid of one, two, three, four, five, six palettes, I think, <laughs> which we still got plenty to go through. But as someone who hoards eyeshadow palettes, that's decent. <laughs> so let's move into the next drawer. Okay, so here we are in the bottom drawer, which is. <laughs> a uh, hot mess and a half. I think we can definitely declutter some things from here. I just don't know what yet. I have this very pretty palette from Urban Decay. This is the Distortion palette and I actually really like this palette. I just don't reach for it that often which is the problem with this collection being so big is that I've got palettes I love that I never really touch. I really like this orange. I think that'd be so pretty for the fall and I'd like the, basically the middle row. I haven't really done a whole lot with the Transformer shades up here. But I like this palette and I'm gonna keep it. Next I have this Pat McGrath palette that quite honestly I barely touch. I need to actually like use this thing. <laughs> I just got this because I really wanted to try out the Pat McGrath formula and it was one of her affordable palettes and by affordable I mean this was like 50 something dollars. So I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm gonna try and use it a little bit more. It seems a lot more like a holiday palette. Like I'm getting like Christmas vibes from this. So I also just don't wanna get rid of it because it's my only Pat McGrath palette and it's keeping me from buying anything else Pat McGrath, which I shouldn't because I barely use this. But also I, I don't use it as much as I should. So I'm gonna hold on to it. I am definitely keeping this. This is the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette and uh, it's a beauty. It's pretty. It's a little bit messy, but I can deal with it. I really like this palette. You know me. I love greens. Hold it on to this. I think this is a palette that needs to go. This is from Bad Habit. This is the Athena palette. This is dupes out a uh, Huda Beauty palette. I forgot which one it was, quite honestly, but I'm pretty sure Bad Habit no longer exists. They shut down their app and their website, so I think they're they're just gone. And I don't reach for this that often. I did do a whole video back in the day, back in the day, like a year ago, about all the bad habit palettes I had and whether I thought that they were worth it compared to the actual products. And really, since then, I haven't picked this palette up. And it seems kind of a shame to keep on to it when I can't really recommend it, you know? So I'm going to declutter this one and give it to someone who can get a lot of good use out of this. Next, I have this Kat Von D palette. This is the anniversary palette. It was the last product I actually bought from Kat Von D before the whole anti-vax crap went down. I've honestly been on the fence about whether or not I want to keep this because not only is it Kat Von D, but I don't really reach for it. I think I did one video on this and then I haven't gone back to this. So I'm gonna declutter this. I'm actually gonna get rid of this and give it to someone who can actually get some good use out of it this highly reflective palette I'm gonna hold on to. This is from BH Cosmetics and this is the Glam Reflection Smoke Palette. And just like it says, it's a very smoky palette. I've got some sentimental value with this palette too because uh, the video I did on this, I actually got noticed by the BH Cosmetics Twitter, which I know it's not really much for someone to like retweet or like something. But it was the first time a brand ever retweeted a picture of a look I did, and I still like this palette, so I, I'm gonna hold on to this one. This Marc Jacobs palette is still fairly brand new, and I can't really get rid of it. This is the palette in Editorial, and I got it because I saw the gold and I saw the green shades, and I just wanted this. But I did buy this back when I was panning a Marc Jacobs palette, so I said I wouldn't use this until I finished panning that palette. Well, I finished panning that palette and I still haven't really used this, so it still has a little thingy in here. So I need to pull this out. I love the formula. I did pan a full Marc Jacobs palette, so I know that I do like it. I just need to actually pull this out. So I have all of these Wet n Wild palettes, and while I love the formula, I'm not reaching for all of these so I can get rid of a few of them. And I think the first one I'm gonna get rid of are probably these two. They're both still fairly brand new. I bought these because I wanted to do a video comparing like the old formula to the new formula. I never got around to it. I don't think I'm ever going to get around to it and I don't want to just keep holding on to products for videos that I'm never going to make. So I'm going to declutter both of these. These are both in Walking on Eggshells. Okay so it's said that these palettes are dupes for a lot of some higher end palettes and this one's actually a dupe for the Lila palette, the Natasha Denona one that I currently have on the chopping block. So I don't need to keep this one. 
I'm going to declutter this one. I don't know if this is actually duping anything in particular. This is in not a basic peach and I don't really reach for this one. So this one can also get decluttered. I believe this one was supposed to be a dupe for the ABH Prism palette, which I never picked up. It's one of the only ABH palettes I haven't picked up because I wasn't really interested in it. It's a decent palette, but I don't reach for it, so I don't need it. So this one's going to be decluttered. The ones that I really want to hold on to are the Comfort Zone palette, the reformulated one the stop playing safe palette which is this this shade right here this green shade is gorgeous so i have to keep this and then i have my glamour squad which this is actually like a good dupe for um the abh soft glam palette so i mean i definitely want to keep this around because wet and wild has awesome eyeshadow palette formulas and it's not to say that those other palettes that i decluttered aren't good they are really good. I just have a ton of them and I already did a video on the new palettes and I would highly recommend them because they're like $4.99. It's incredible value for $4.99 but after using all of them and you see the size of my collection I'm not reaching for all of them so I'm just gonna hold on to my favorites. Next I have this palette from Milani. This is the Bold Obsessions palette and this palette is stunning. This is a gorgeous palette. I love this formula. I really want to see Milani come out with more palettes like this but maybe a bit more colorful because it seems like they've been sticking very much to neutrals uh, but I love this formula it's gorgeous I definitely have to hold on to it but I've been looking at the rest of their palettes and nothing else like I feel like you only need one of their palettes because once you have one you kind of have them all because they look so kind of similar but I love this one in particular I love the looks I can get from this I love the way that the shadows are organized so that you have like one look here one look here one look here and you can mix and match I just I love this palette so definitely keeping this one this one is going to get decluttered. This is from e.l.f. and this is the Baked Eyeshadow Palette. I don't really like their baked formula. I got this for free back when, um, I think I placed an online order and it was with any online order you got a free baked shadow palette and it really isn't great. So this one's going to get decluttered. Next I have this Natasha Denona 5 Pan Palette. It's a little bit messy, excuse my mess. But I did do a Spotlight on Petite Palettes with this and I love the formula and I love these shades. So I'm going to hold on to this one. Though I think I did dig my nail into this a little bit and break it. But I do recommend if you are interested in Natasha Denona, either pick up one of the mini palettes. They have like a mini sunset, a mini uh, nude palette that I heard is really good. Or pick up one of these five pan ones. Don't go straight for the 125, 200 or whatever palettes. Go for one of the smaller palettes first. This is a bad habit palette that I have to keep a hold on, at least until I finish my Pan That palette, because this is the Retro Love palette, which is a dupe for Subculture. And so I've actually been using this to pull in for shades that I've been missing or shades that didn't work as well in Subculture, like a Psychedelic, which is their dupe for Cube, it worked a lot better for me than Cube ever did. I'm about to run out of Electric in my palette, so once that's gone, I'll probably reach for this one. So even though this isn't really applicable anymore since you can't buy this and Bad Habit's no longer around, I am going to hold on to this until I finish panning Subculture, and then I'll probably declutter this one. I have a couple of the Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes, and quite honestly, I haven't really been reaching for them. The Mauve Obsessions, I've used a couple of times, haven't really gone back into, and I think I have these shades... I don't know, we'll see. Um, electric Obsession. I used to love, but now I hardly touch. So this might be on the chopping block. And then the Smoky Obsessions, I actually really like. So, I'm gonna hold on to the Smoky Obsessions, and I think... I think I need to declutter one of these. You know what? I'm gonna keep the Mob Obsessions. Um... I feel like I can get a lot more use out of this and I feel like the electric one I'm just not really reaching for because I was disappointed in what shades they made matte versus sh versus shimmer. So this one I'm going to declutter this one and I'm going to keep the mob obsessions. Next I have my Lorac collection which I have the Lorac Pro 1, 2, and 3. I love these palettes so I'm not actually going to get rid of them. I'm just going to show you guys them. This is the Lorac Pro 1. I always take this with me when I travel. And I will be traveling at least three more times through the end of this year. So I'm probably going to bring this with me. And I'll be doing some videos on travel, you know, makeup and packing once that time comes. But I love this palette so much. Next, we have the Lorac Pro 2, which is these, these, 
which is this gorgeous cool toned palette i really love the shades in here and i love the formula and i specifically love the silver and jade shades right here very slytherin very lovely Last but not least, we have the Lorac Pro 3, which is your warm palette here. I feel like the collection was done once they did these three because you had everything that you needed, honestly. The Lorac Pro 4 was just kind of a mauve -y thing that nobody really needed. I felt like they could have done... Oh! Oh, okay, we're good. Oh my god. <laughs> my heart just leapt up into my throat. But like I was saying, I feel like if you have the Lorac Pro 1, 2, and 3, you don't need anything else from Lorac. I feel like everything is in those three palettes, but I do like this, especially that terracotta shade. That's such a unique shade in my collection. Gorgeous. I have a ton of these Maybelline City Mini palettes, and I feel like the same thing. I kept these to do a video, and I don't think, don't think I ever really did. So let's go through these. These two look fairly similar, so I don't think I need to keep both of them. This one's Diamond District, and then this one is Graffiti Pop. I like the shimmer in this one better, so I think I'm going to hold on to this one and declutter Graffiti Pop. And I, you know what? I actually think the rest of these are distinct enough that I'll keep all of them. This is Matte About Town, which is like their only, I think only, full matte palette. It's a really nice neutral matte palette, easy to bring in, easy to travel with, so that's a good one. This one is Bronzed Rooftops, I think it's called, and it's all, it's like my favorite. It's a bit shimmery, but it's gorgeous, and I love the shades in here. You can get a gorgeous look with this. I think this one, out of the rest of them, is my favorite. This one is called Urban Jungle, and of course you know me, the greens suck me in. I love the greens in here, they're gorgeous, so I'm holding on to this. And last but not least, we have Blushed Avenue, which is a more pinky, purpley kind of palette, and it's not all matte, so I also like this one. I'm gonna hold on to this one. Next, I have these e.l.f. palettes, and I know for sure at least one of these can go. The first one I have is the Mad for Matte Jewel Pop palette, and I actually really like this palette, particularly the orange and the green shades. They're really pretty. I love them for fall, especially for October, so I'm holding on to this one. This is the Mad for Matte 2 palette, which is, out of all of these, my favorite. I love the shades in here. It's my perfect matte fall palette. I absolutely adore this palette. It's great. It's not going anywhere. This next palette is the Rose Gold Sunset palette, which isn't technically a Mad for Matte palette because you do have some shimmers in here, but this is a gorgeous palette. I also did a video on this palette and a couple of looks with it. And there's a theme. I love the orange shadows from e.l.f. They're just so good. And the shimmer is beautiful. I love it. I also love these shades over here. I feel like you just get a nice variety of shades in here. And looking at this just reminds me of like a pumpkin patch or a, a fall tree. Just like nice fall foliage. I love this palette. This is the 90s Mood palette. And it's an all shimmer palette. And it's not that great. It's not the same formula as the other palettes. So this one is gonna go... All right, this is one of the newer palettes from e.l.f. This is called the New Classics, and this is actually a very pretty palette. I haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of it yet, except for the shade Gilded. I love this shade, uh, and I'm glad I was actually able to fix the packaging. When I first got this, I opened up the packaging, and the cover was completely, like, ripped off, so I had to super glue it all together. But I like this palette, and I like the way that they're going with their palette, so I'm going to hold on to this one. Alright, so this pile right here is like mainly my ColourPop palettes, and I can go through these. I feel like I don't need this many. Okay, so this was like a four pan whatever with some singles in it, and I never reach for this, and I never reach for these shades, so this can just go. These two palettes right off the bat, they're not going anywhere. I love both of them. This is the Good Sport palette, which is another beautiful fall palette. I cannot get enough of this. And this is the Yes Please palette. Their dupe for the Natasha Denona palette. Their first palette ever. This is gorgeous. I did rearrange the shades in here, so it doesn't look like what you would get when you buy this now, but I love this. So while this is a ColourPop palette, this is actually my Depotted Alien palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So I'm going to hold on to these shades because they're all I have left of that palette. And I love these greens. This palette can go. I haven't reached for it since my last declutter, and that's a sign. So this is the Element of Surprise palette. It's just like a... Yeah, like a meh. I, don't even, I can't even really describe this. I just never reach for it. Next, we have the All I See is Magic palette, which I actually really like this palette. I just haven't reached for it. I like the shades, I like the ratios of matte to shimmers, and I like the shimmers they give you. They're very holiday, they're very deep, and I like this, so I'm gonna hold on to this palette. This palette I'm gonna let go of, because even though I bought this to do a video and I kept wanting to reach for it, I never did. This is the Wet palette, and it's just like 
bit and I have blue palettes now and I don't need this so someone else can get a lot more use out of this. Last but not least, one of my favorite new ColourPop palettes. This is the Just My Luck palette and look at how gorgeous this is. I love this. I did a first impressions video on this and I, oh, I can't get enough of it. So definitely keeping this one. Next, I have a MAC palette that I think I just, I need to declutter because I never reach for it and it's just skated by just barely in a few of my other declutters and it needs to just go. This is the Basic Bitch palette and uh, I just never touch it. I never do. And I used to keep it because it was my only MAC palette, but I've got a MAC single palette and I don't need to hold on to something I'm not going to use. So uh, I'm going to declutter this one. I'm also going to declutter this one because this is another Bad Habit palette. This is the Artistry palette. This is supposed to dupe a um, another ABH palette. I think it was the ABH and Mario palette that I wasn't able to get a hold of because it was a limited edition thing before I ever even got into makeup. But I don't reach for this and Bad Habit's no longer a thing, so I need to declutter this. Next, I have this Makeup Revolution palette. Ugh, let me just break it because it's still taped shut. That's why I literally never use this. I got this for free with like an Ulta order online or something and I've never touched it and I don't need to. I don't really need, I didn't really want this. <laughs> so someone can get use out of this, especially since it's sealed and it hasn't been touched. Next, I have this Alamar Cosmetics palette, which is really pretty and I really like this one shade in particular, but I haven't touched this since my last declutter. And that's saying something. Uh, I got this in a boxy charm, and I, I don't need it. This is gonna go. From Pure, I have a neutral palette that I actually really, really love. This is the Soiree Diaries palette. I love this palette. This is such a great neutral palette. This is everything that I want out of a neutral palette, so definitely holding on to this one. So I think I'm about ready to let this one go. This is a sentimental palette more than anything else. This was one of the first two eyeshadow palettes I ever bought. This is the Too Faced Natural Eyes palette. And as you can see, it is very old. There is some pan. I'm sure this is probably isn't good anymore. Purely holding on to it for the sentimental value and I don't need to do that anymore. So I'm not gonna declutter this to somebody. I'm probably just gonna have to throw this out because it is so old. So I like how earlier I said that I kept something because it was my only MAC palette when clearly it wasn't. And I didn't realize that because I never really looked. I had this mini, this is the MAC Semi Sweet Times Nine palette. And I also never really reach for this one. <laughs> I think I bought this just because of this row right here I really liked. So I will hold on to this one. <laughs> Give it another fair shot. It's purely matte. I mean, I don't know. This is on the chopping block. If I don't use this by my next declutter, it'll go. All right, and in here, the last things we have are my Kylie palette. So this is the... The uh, Calm Before the Storm palette, I think it's what it's called. I think. I don't know. This is beautiful. These are like some of my only like pastel shades and I love that you get like a matte and a shimmer. I like this palette so I'm keeping this one. I have the purple palette that I never use and never reach for so I need to declutter this because the only shade I was really using was this one and I've got that shade in my collection so this one is going to be decluttered. And then I'm going to hold on to these last two because I actually really, really like these. The first one is the Blue Honey palette. I actually love this palette. This is a gorgeous palette, especially this shade and this shade. Uh, I don't know what it is about this that particularly draws me in, but I love it. So holding on to this one. And this is the Halloween palette, which I believe right now is on sale uh, and they're trying to get rid of the stock. But I also really liked this one, but... To be honest, I haven't touched it in a while, <laughs> but I like how different it is. Like this is definitely a different looking palette than what you would normally see. It's unique in my collection, so I'm gonna hold on to it. All right, so I'm gonna clean this drawer out real quick because we've got some shadow down there and then we're gonna rearrange all of my palettes. Alright, and here is the reorganized bottom drawer. It looks so much better. It's just more organized, a bit cleaner. I could probably combine some of the things from the top drawer, but for now, this is how it's going to be. All right, so to finish off this, I wanted to show you guys the rest of the palettes that I keep on display around my room, mainly my Juvia's Place palettes and my ABH palettes. So 
in this portion of like my dresser, my whole dresser, <laughs> the lighting is the best, but I've got like all of my like lip glosses and some things on display up here. And then here are all my clothes in those little buckets. And then down here, I thought it was perfect. I had so many Juvia's Place palettes and I love them. So they're all right here. I have the Tribe palette. I have the Festival palette, the Deuce palette. I have the Warrior 1 and 2, and then I have the Zulu palette. And I just had so many of them, and I love the artwork on the front that I thought they deserved to be on display and not just hidden in my drawer. And last but not least over here, this is kind of like an old bookshelf that I have some skincare products on. I keep my brushes up here, my mugs, my old pan that palette that's empty. I keep it on display. And then down here I have my ABH palettes because I love these too and I like to keep them on display. I have the Sultry palette. I have the Temptress palette from Alter Ego, which was a dupe for the Sultry palette. I have the Soft Glam, the Modern Renaissance, and then the Norvina palette back there. As you can see, some of these got pretty dusty. I do live in an attic, so dust gets pretty heavy on just about everything unless I'm dusting every day. But I love these palettes and they just, I like having them on display over there. All right, and here we are. These are all the palettes that I'm decluttering. Let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I decluttered 25 palettes, which was a hell of a lot better than I thought I was going to do, especially because I have 100 palettes, so 25, I decluttered a fourth of my palettes. This is so good, this is much better than I ever thought I could just because I'm so attached to eyeshadow palettes, but this was a success. This was great. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for watching Declutter Week. I believe I will have one more video out after this one. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you'll be notified once that video does come out. Thank you guys again for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.